Okay, so section 1.5 is all about solving linear equations and linear inequalities. So we all have our worksheet. I'm going to do the first example, and, and you're going to remind me of the steps involved to do this, and then got one for you. So here we go. Example one, we're going to solve this. 10 plus 3, 2x minus 4 equals 17 minus x plus 5. All right. So hopefully this is like second nature. You've been doing this since middle school, probably, and you're bored with it. Uh, probably we all are. Okay, what's the first thing that I need to do in order to make this look a little better to solve it? Go for it. Shout it out. Perfect. Distributive property. Let's get rid of those parentheses. Okay, I, I want I want to make this look a little cleaner on both sides before I even worry about solving. Okay, so my first couple steps are not solving. They're going to be making this look nicer. Okay, so first thing is distributive property. So I have three times two is six x, three times negative four is negative 12. Over here I have 17, negative times x is negative x, negative times five, negative five. Have I lost anybody so far? Just the distributive property. Okay, now what am I gonna, again, I'm not solving yet. I'm not ready to solve. This still is a little too complicated for me. I, I wanna make this look a little nicer. What am I gonna do on both sides? Combine my like terms. Okay, this is always going to be your first two steps. Okay, if the, if you have to distribute, collect your like terms, make it look nicer. Okay, so on the left side, uh, there's no x term, so we'll leave the six x. Ten minus twelve is negative two. Uh, I've got a negative x. I like negative. Uh, I like my x's first. That's Miss Hilliard, tenth grade algebra, way back, like fifty years ago. Okay, that's what she drilled that in my head, and I still do it. So sorry, uh, it doesn't really matter. You can put the number first. Uh, but 17 minus 5 is plus 12. There we go. This is the most complicated linear equation I could possibly give you. If you can do this, you can do any of them now. And the general format is I want to get all my x's on one side. And again, Miss Hilliard, left side. Okay, that's what she liked. And then everything else on the right side. You can put the x's on the right if you want. Okay, it doesn't matter in the long run. Okay, but I'm going to put my x's on the left since I have the pen. So if I'm going to put all my x's on the left, what do I have to do here to get this x over here? I'm going to add, change, to change the sign. Yes, I'm going to write the steps on this first one, but this is college algebra, so I'm going to get out of that habit, okay, uh, pretty quickly. So I'm going to add the x to both sides. And so 6x plus x is 7x. Over here, they cancel. Well, if my goal is to get all the x's on one side of the equal sign and everything else on the other side of the equal sign, what else do I have to do? I got to add the two, right? I want the equal sign to stay in the middle, so I have to add the two to both sides. Negative two plus two is zero, that cancels. 12 and two is 14. So notice, I've got all of my x's on one side of the equal sign, I got all the numbers on the other side of the equal sign. It's always what you want to do. And then your last step is always going to be the following to do what? Divide. divide success again i'm going to write the step on this one and so then we have x is equal to two and then just good notation okay college algebra we're a little more math mature than we were we're going to write our answer as a set so the solution set is the set with a two in it i would like you please to do exercise one right next door very similar problem
All right, so I'm going to get started. If you're not quite done, keep working. Okay, we'll all get to the same place. First thing I'm going to do, just as you told me a moment ago, is I'm going to distribute. So I have negative 8 minus 3x plus 5. The other side, there's nothing to distribute. Next thing I'm going to do is collect like terms. So I have negative 3x and then negative 8 plus 5 is negative 3. There's no like terms on the right side of this. We okay? Questions, comments, concerns? Okay, again, you can get your x's on the right. We will end up with the exact same value. I'm going to put my x, yes. Negative 8 plus 5, like terms. So I'm going to put all my x's on the right. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. When I subtract 2x from both sides, I end up with a negative 5x. I'm going to add the 3 to both sides to get it over there. And when I do that, I get 6. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by negative 5. I'll do it in this case just because we're going to end up with a fraction. And fractions are OK. They're our friends. I know we hate them. Blood pressure goes up when we see them, and I'm going to leave that negative 6 over 5. It is a terminating decimal. If you really love decimals, you can make that negative 1.2. Totally fine. Uh, we talked about that a little bit on Monday. So again, here's my solution set. If you got anything for me that we need to talk about, let me know. Just try to keep this moving on this stuff that you have really likely seen before and seen a lot of. I don't want you to feel like you're wasting your time today. All right, example two. Example two says this. This is one you know about this one. I want to solve this problem right here. It includes fractions. Okay, again, I know you hate fractions. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to get rid of the fractions first. We're going to clear them. So I don't have to deal with them at all because I don't want to. Okay, so the way we're going to clear the fractions again, I'm just refreshing your memory. I know COVID, we're probably all just brain dead right now. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to clear the fractions. And the process that we employ to clear the fractions is we multiply every term by the common denominator. Now, I'm going to use the least common denominator, but here's a little math secret. You can use any common denominator. It doesn't matter. Okay, but I'm going to clear the fractions by multiplying every term by the least common denominator. So on this problem, what is the least common denominator between the denominators I have? Six. Now, somebody here, I'm sure, is thinking or said 12. 12 is a common denominator. It's not the lowest one. You can do it. It'll work out. Your numbers are just going to be a little different. Um, I don't have time to teach you all about least common denominators. Again, I have videos if you want. But here's a real quick and easy, clean way to find the common multiple between two numbers. You just list. Now, this one's not too bad, but let's let me just change the numbers a little bit. Let's just pretend it's it's three and, and four that I need to find the common denominator between. And it would be 12. Yeah, they they don't have any, they don't share any factors, so you just multiply them together. But if you're if you're not sure, then you just list the multiples until you find the one they share. So three times one is three, three times two is six. 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 4 is 12, 3 times 5 is 15. You can always add more on to the end of the list. 4 times 1 is 4, and now I'm just, I'm just going until I find the first one that they share. 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 3 is 12. Oh, ding, 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 ding. There it is. Okay, it's the listing method. It's the easiest way. Sometimes it takes a little longer, but it's the easiest way to find the common denominator if you don't have a method. If you have a method, awesome. So I'm going to multiply every one of these terms by six. I got three terms. I've got this term, so six, which I'm going to write six over one, just so I don't get confused. Here's my second term. I'm going to squeeze a six over one in right there. Now, I know this thing over here is not a fraction, and the temptation is to ignore it. But if you ignore it, then you have changed the equation. It's not the same equation anymore. So you have to multiply every term, whether it's a fraction or not, by the least common denominator. With me? You okay? You got a question? No? Anybody got a question? All right. So here goes. First term. What happens to the sixes? 
We can't so we celebrate and rejoice. No more fractions. That's what our goal is. We should not have any fractions left when we're done with this step. If you have a fraction, you've done something wrong. Okay, so all I'm left with is x plus seven. Boom. Plus, there's a plus sign there. The next term, what happens between the six and the two? Not 12, the six is in the numerator, the two is in the denominator. Divide and it becomes what? Yeah, two goes into six and leaves three. Yep, canceling. I'm going to distribute right now, if you don't mind, because I've got this three and then I've got the two X minus eight. So three times two X is six X. Three times minus eight is negative 24. And then on the other side of this, I don't have a fraction. Nothing's going to cancel. So what I've got is negative four times six is negative 24. Once you've done that, once you've cleared the fractions, there's nothing different about any of these problems. You can, if you feel like it. Yeah, sure. Okay. That, I mean, it is doable like that. You can, you can, uh, you can add these fractions together and then, yeah, you, there's a lot of different ways you can do this, but I have found most students don't want to deal with the fractions. And so this is why I teach clearing the fractions. All right. So here we go. I'm going to finish this up real quick, collecting my like terms. X plus six X is seven X. 7 minus 24 is negative 17. My x's are already on the same side, so I'm just going to write 7x, and then I'm going to add the 17 to both sides. When I add 17, I get negative 7, and divide. My solution set is negative 1. On the next column, Exercise two is the same sort of problem, just gives you the chance to run through the steps. Okay, so exercise two, go ahead and solve uh, that problem that involves fractions for me. All right, I'm going to get started. So if you're still working, keep working. Nothing wrong with that. Common denominator among these three denominators is 12. Okay, we had already done that for three and the four. The two does not change the common denominator, the common multiple. You can go ahead and list it out. And so here we go. I'm going to go term by term, and we're going to see what happens. So the first one, the three, is going to go into 12 and leave four. So I'm going to distribute that four. Okay. Fractions should go away. All the denominators should go. That's why we're doing this. So 4 times 2 is 8x. 4 times 1 is plus 4. Next, 4 goes into 12 and leaves 3. So I have 3 times x is 3x. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. And on the other side, 2 goes into 12 and leaves 6. 
and six times 13 is 70. I know it's a hard step. It's probably the hardest thing in this section is the clearing the fractions problems. And I get it. Okay, we don't we don't like fractions. We get awkward and uncomfortable around them. Okay, so practice those. Move on to your my math lab. Uh, do do a couple extra. Make sure you're comfortable clearing those fractions. Okay, so eight x and three x. That's eleven x. Four minus three is plus one. I'm going to subtract the one from both sides, and seventy eight minus one is seventy seven. When I divide both sides by 11, I get that my solution set is seven. <laughs> this is 13 over two. I need to multiply every term by the common denominator, which is 12. So how many times does two go to 12? Six, Six right there, yep, and then this is just calculator. You can use calculators in here, uh, but that's just multiplication. I multiplied six times the 13, that's already there. Okay. All of this is always, when you take that common denominator, you're multiplying. I'm multiplying here. I distributed because I'm multiplying here. I distributed because I'm multiplying. So it's always multiplication with that common denominator. I got one more fraction problem. It just looks slightly different, but again, there's three terms to this one. Let me write the problem on the board and then uh, we'll get you started with it. So this problem looks the following. I've got seven over three times two X minus one, one over five times X, and then two over five times four minus three X. Just gonna give you a little hint before you get started on this problem. This problem is same as that problem. The fractions are just written a little different. Instead of the binomial being on top of the denominator like it is here, the binomials written to the side, but there's still three terms, okay? There is this term that you're gonna multiply by the common denominator to clear that fraction. There is this term you're gonna multiply by the common denominator to clear the fraction, and there's this term. So go ahead and get started on that. Find the common denominator and begin the multiplying process. Just to make sure we're all starting the same way. What's the common denominator? 15. Great. Go with it. 15.
I just for time's sake, I'm going to go ahead and get started again. If you're still working, keep working. Nothing wrong with that. So here goes. Uh, you told me already the common denominator was 15. Uh, I'm multiplying by each of these terms. I only have to multiply by what's outside. You either do what's outside or inside the parentheses, which inside the parentheses be a lot more difficult. So here we go. Three goes into 15 five times. I'm just going to take this one step at a time, just because I don't want to. I don't want to do too much and lose anybody. So the three goes into 15 five times. I've lost the fraction. That's good. Five times the seven that was already there is 35. Now, if you want to distribute all at once, that's fine, uh, but I'm going to take that as a second separate step. On the other side, five goes into 15 three times. Three times the one that was already there is 3x. Five goes into 15 three times. Three times the two that was already there is six. And we'll distribute that in just a moment times the four minus 3x. Okay, that's the first, that's the hardest step. The rest of this is just what we talked about earlier that you confidently told me the answers to. Next, I'm going to distribute. So 35 times 2x is 70x. 35 times negative 1 is negative 35. On the other side, 6 times 4 is 24. 6 times negative 3 is negative 18x. I've got a couple like terms, so I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. On the left, there's no like terms. The left is waiting patiently. 3x minus 8, uh, excuse me, 3x minus 18x is negative 15x. And this is the same equation, just different numbers that we've been solving every time. I'm going to get the x's on the left. I'm going to put the numbers on the right. So I'm going to add the 15 to both sides. When I add the 15 to both sides, I get 85x. I'm going to add the 35 to both sides. When I add the 35 to both sides, I get 59, if I've done my arithmetic right. But you learned Monday, and you need to look at me carefully on that. And last but not least, I'm going to divide both sides by 85, and we get that the solution set is 59 over 85. Before you pack up, let me just mention this one thing. So in my math lab, please get started. You can now do everything in section one that's assigned, everything in section two that's assigned. And when you get to section five, uh, you know, the problems are labeled. You can do anything that says equation. Okay, we've talked about uh, most of, we have one more little thing to talk about equations, but you can now solve your, solve your equations as, as you're going. Um, 